When Phil Jackson agreed to extend Carmelo Anthony's contract and add a no-trade clause in an effort to save a few million dollars, he essentially sealed his fate. It became clear trading Melo would be the best thing for the Knicks, yet Jackson had his hands tied, and ultimately, the fate of the club cost him his job. Out of this turmoil, Melo finally agreed to waive the no-trade clause for a short list of destinations. Surprisingly, OKC was on that list, and Thunder GM Sam Presti pulled off another blockbuster this summer. After already trading some pieces to get Paul George from Indiana, they sent Ennis Kanter, Doug McDermott, and a 2018 second round pick to the New York Knicks in exchange for Anthony. The first thing that jumped out at me looking at the stats is how often these players like to isolate on their men. The league has never seen three ISO players on the same team like this before. Last year, LeBron was fourth and Kyrie was sixth in total ISOs, and they led a team with the third best offensive rating in the league. So it's doable. However, look at the top 10 in terms of total isolations from last year. Russ is second, Melo is third, and Paul George is 10th. To his credit, Melo was in the 78th percentile, ranking 33rd out of 133 players who isolated at least 40 times. However, you have to scroll down a bit to find Paul George at 47th and Russ at 51st. The only thing about examining Melo's ISOs is that they came out of the triangle offense often, and there won't be a lot of comparison to what they run in OKC. He got a number of ISOs out of pinch post action, usually from some sort of stop and pop from the mid-range, but he'd also get them out of the post, where he would do pretty well, but creating your own shot in the teeth of the defense requires some degree of athletic ability, and Melo has been showing signs of his decline for a few seasons now. As far as where the big three like to ISO, Russ clearly gets the vast majority of his out top, and usually as end of quarter or two for one situations, which might cause a little struggle for the ball, since this is traditionally a spot for Melo to go to work as well. That said, Melo balanced out most of his ISOs on either the left or right wing, favoring the right wing a little bit more often. Paul George also favors the right wing quite a bit, almost never using the left side to isolate, but also has a significant amount out top. So there's a bit of overlap across these players, and Billy Donovan will no doubt struggle a little to devise an offense that lets each of these players get what they want in the spots on the floor where they're comfortable. There are tons of ways to make new teammates get more comfortable with each other. Taking them out to dinner, do a series of trust falls, or just make them walk around the locker room in me undies. I'm sure Melo and Paul George would have a lot to talk about when comparing how their family jewels fit into their diamond-shaped pouch. And me undies is so convinced you'll love them, they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like them, return them for a full refund. Go to meundies.com slash coachnick right now and get 20% off your first pair with free shipping. I got myself a few pairs, and I really love them, but wait, what the f***? So bounce your balls right over to meundies.com slash coachnick, get 20% off, and start moving in style and comfort. One encouraging sign for the Thunder is that Neville likes to post up a lot, and for the past several years, they've had players who use the post up quite a bit, especially Ennis Canner. so they're no strangers to getting the ball down low and letting him eat. And Melo has been pretty efficient with his moves down there, so expect Donovan to solve the issue of sharing the basketball by getting Melo down low for shots. That said, watch these Melo post-ups. Whether or not they actually go in, notice how stagnant they become as he takes his sweet time to get into a move while everyone else stands around to watch. This is troubling to me, since Russ is no stranger to posting up himself the same way. But let's talk about the ideal situation for each of these players for a moment. One scenario could go something like this. Westbrook brings the ball up and passes to Paul George off a pin down, who tries to get into the lane and kick it out to Mello, who can either spot up for a shot or go to work on his man. Mello's catch and shoot rankings are very high, and it harkens back to Olympic Mello, 
who would often lead the team in scoring by playing as a role player. It seemed apparent in New York that he was unwilling to sprint around the half court in the flow of an offense, so simply creating spot-up opportunities can get him to a level of efficiency and dominance we haven't seen from him in several years. Another scenario that could work well is the Russ Mello pick and roll, where teams concerned with Westbrook's drive could end up giving Mello good looks from three as he pops out. And if the rotation is there, Mello could then get it to Paul George, who could attack the closeout and finish at the rim with supreme athleticism. It would be great to see Paul George bring the ball up from time to time and get Russ and Mello operating on the same side of the floor, perhaps around the elbow, so Russ could get mid-range pull-ups or Mello could face up from the high post and just go to work on his man. Either way, I wouldn't expect a high-paced offense that is at the top of the league for number of passes. It would be an offense designed to get Russ attacking early and creating a shot for himself or a teammate, or then letting Mello and PG take turns depending on which side of the floor the ball is on. What tends to be confusing is the starting lineup itself. I guess they'll go with Mello at the 4 and Paul George at the 3. Mello has resisted playing as a small ball 4, although he did play 31% of his possessions there last year. And let's face it, Anthony is the ideal small ball 4. He's got the strength to defend down low if he tries it all, and he can then space to the three-point line or break his man down off the dribble. That leaves Andre Robertson starting at shooting guard and Steven Adams starting at center. The spacing will no doubt have to come from Melo and George, with hopes that Carmelo's looks from deep will be better than they've been in New York and his percentage rises. Either way, it's a lot better than what Russ played with last year, which should allow him to do a lot less on offense to conserve some energy for that activity on the other side of the floor. Defense. While Melo has been a problem defensively for a couple of years, perhaps in a new situation, Donovan will get more consistent effort from him. Certainly having Robertson and Paul George on the perimeter and Adams defending the paint will be a formidable defense that actually matches up well with the Warriors. That leads it up to Russ to improve his suspect defense, which tends to be problematic off the ball and effective on ball infrequently. That said, the bench will loom large and Donovan will be able to stagger the big three's minutes to take pressure off of them. Raymond Felton was a solid addition to back up Russ and maybe play alongside him for stretches to move Russ to the two guard. I've liked most of what I've seen from Jeremy Grant and he'd be in a good role to come off the bench and be an aggressive scorer for them. Patrick Patterson is a great pickup because he can play small ball five, stretch the floor a little bit from three, and has lots of playoff experience. Alex Abrinas has shown brief flashes of ability, but this is still a huge question mark. And if Donovan has to play the big three heavy minutes through the regular season, it could cause problems in the playoffs. So in the end, the biggest question is one of chemistry. Will Russ let go control of a lot of the offense to allow the talents of Melo and Paul George to shine through? Can Paul George continue to be an elite three-point shooter on high volume to open up space for the offense? Can Melo find a way to get the shots he wants without completely disrupting Westbrook? While there is quite a bit of redundancy between PG and Melo, at least George's game is varied and flexible enough for him to be more complimentary in order to fit in. And where does this put OKC in the Western Conference? Did this jump them ahead of Houston with CP3 and Harden? Possibly. Are they now better than the Spurs? I don't know, because there is some young talent in San Antonio that could surprise a lot of people. I suspect the Thunder will be either third or fourth and make some real noise in the playoffs. And that's all Thunder fans can hope for as Westbrook finishes out his contract, as does Paul George. They do have some unique lineups to combat the Warriors, but if they have to go small, Melo will be forced to guard either Durant or Draymond, and I suspect that will be the thing that forces the train off the tracks. But until then, let's get it on. I cannot wait to see how these newly loaded Western Conference teams go at each other tooth and nail for the right to play the Warriors in the Conference Finals. Sports fans, don't miss Virtual Scout School. Learn from the pros in a year-long online curriculum that will teach you all about scouting and front office structure. 
Act now and get one month free by using my code BBALL. You in?